What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Tactical Wook, back with another episode of Shoot Smart. Today on Shoot Smart, we're going to be talking about training versus practice versus fun. We're going to be talking about the couple drills that I've been really, really favoring lately and have been really helping me make some breakthroughs with my shooting. Thanks to Ben Stoger. If you like these episodes of Shoot Smart, make sure you drop a comment and let me know what subjects you would like to hear about in the future. And make sure you like, subscribe, and send this video to a friend who sucks at shooting, and maybe you can help them out. Before we get into the video, I want to give a special thank you and a huge shout out to the company that makes all of these videos possible, Alpha Shooting Sports. Alpha Shooting Sports is an Anaheim, California company that specializes in manufacturing high-performance AR-15 and Glock-compatible parts. They make beautiful barrels, slides, AR-15 uppers and lowers, as well as full, complete builds that are absolutely to die for. Make sure you check them out on Facebook and Instagram. They also do CNC milling services. They have their own custom mounting plates for 1911s, 2011s, and CZs. And if you use code JB10 at checkout online, you'll score 10% off of your entire order. Thanks for supporting the channel. Now let's get into the video. Just leaving Route 66 Shooting Sports Park shot about 200 rounds maybe 300 two or 300 rounds i uh, had a really really efficient practice session we shot ben stager's new drill which i believe he calls the single shot trigger break drill essentially it's where you take the gun you load one round into the chamber and you remove the magazine Put your dot on your aiming reference. I use a little piece of black tape on my USPSA target right in the center of the A zone. I put the dot on my aiming reference. I break the single shot that is in the gun. And as the dot returns to that aiming reference, I press the trigger a second time. But because there's no round in the gun, the gun doesn't go off and I just get to see the input that I'm putting into the gun as I shoot. Um, we shot about 100 or 150 rounds on this drill, and let me tell you, it is a banger of a drill. I got so much data back out of firing one single shot. I would really, really encourage any of you guys to go out and try it out. Great, great drill. Drilling is so, so important when it comes to practical shooting. I know most people don't like practicing or just don't have the money or the resources to practice, which is fine if you don't really care that much about getting better. <laughs> I talked about in the last episode how over the past three years, I haven't done very much practice. I've maybe practiced all in all three days total, live fire, and then yeah, I put a good amount of dry fire work in, but definitely not as much as I know that I should have been dry fire practicing. A lot of people think that they're practicing, even though they're not. I, I can explain that a little bit more. Let's, let's take it from the tactical perspective. When we're talking about CQB, you know, vehicle engagement drills, nods, night vision stuff, you know, long range, you know, tactical sniper courses and stuff. That stuff's all cool and fun. And if that's what you're into, more power to you. Don't call it training. That stuff's not training. That stuff is fun. It's cool. Uh, it's definitely super enjoyable. It's a great stress reliever, but it's not practical. The likelihood of you having to use any of those skills or techniques in a real life scenario, especially being a civilian, is closer to zero than probably being struck by lightning. And it, 
the thing is, is it goes for sh- for competition shooters as well, right? Like, shooting a match every weekend is fine and dandy, and you'll be able to get a certain level of competence um, just shooting USPSA matches or Hit Factor, IDPA matches, whatever, every weekend. But that's not training. It's not practice. And people need to stop acting like it is. Because at the end of the day, it's just fun. You're just out there to have fun. And that's fine too. But again, don't call it training. It diminishes what your true actual potential is. Because if you were actually practicing, you'd be a lot better at competition shooting than you are just shooting a match every weekend. I'd like to see a shift in the culture of 2A from fun and training to actual practice, practicing shooting. I hope that makes sense. If you don't know how to train, which is a lot of people's problems, most people show up to the range, they'll shoot a couple hundred rounds, you know, generally have a decent group somewhere around the A zone, they'll be like, yeah, that's good, cool. I don't. And that's it. And then they just go home. With no actual, like, quantifiable data to be able to calculate, assess, and then, you know, fix or address these deficiencies. I'll, I'll reiterate it from the last episode. I really thought that I was so much better at shooting than I am until I started actually practicing. My ceiling is infinite now that I have started practicing, training, assessing the things that I'm actually doing wrong in matches and putting in an effort to correct those issues. Another drill that I've been uh, using a lot and I think has been really fixing my transition issues, especially on steel, is the designated target drill. You put multiple targets out in an array. Uh, The more complex, the better. And then you pick one of those targets to be the designated target. That target will be the target that you shoot in between shooting each of the other targets. Um, I think Ben Steger has some videos on that. Go check them out. I'll be making a, a video about it uh, here in the, in the near future. Had a, had a rough match this weekend. Um, shot a little more penalties than I was hoping to and had a couple uh, manipulation issues with reloading and stuff like that. Sprained my hand in jiu-jitsu last week short posting on a Uchimata uh, sprained my hand, my support hand pretty good, so I was kind of all over the place this weekend, but made it through practice today, felt a lot better, um, feeling stronger, still a little sore, but not feeling so weak, it was really feeling weak last week and going into the match this weekend, so glad that it's, uh, it's healing up fast. Another thing about only shooting matches is I was shooting matches a lot over the past two years and I shot a lot of major matches and reflecting on practice versus shooting matches and things like that I realized that if I would have taken you know half the money that I spent on majors last year and put that money towards actually practicing and training and trying to actually get better not just taking classes not just going and you know spraying rounds downrange but actually meaningfully practicing um i realized that i maybe could have actually done well at some of those majors instead of sucking so bad so if you are the type of person that shoots a match every single weekend but can't find the time or money to practice get real dude you need to you need to figure it out need to make time or take a match off or do something so that you can get in those extra reps and identify the things that are costing you points when you show up to match day on the weekend. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode one technically of Shoot Smart. It's funny, I was looking forward to 
doing this video for you guys all week last week so I really hope you guys uh, get a lot out of this series and I'm gonna try to keep it up I'm gonna try to make it a weekly thing maybe even bi-weekly sometimes depending on uh, my activity when it comes to shooting so thank you guys so much again make sure you guys like comment subscribe let me know what you guys want to hear me talk about in the future and I uh, appreciate all the support catch you in the next one Thank <laughs> you.